guys. I'm going to do an unedited, well, as best I can, because I'm not sure how long things will take, but a video with Luca, who has a history of being bad with his nails. So we're depending on how long they are, I might use the clippers, but I've also got my Dremel charged and ready. And I've just got him on a slip leash. And I just want to show you guys, I haven't done any handling work with him whatsoever yet. We've just done basic obedience, leadership, socialization, things like that. So already I think that stuff is definitely taking his energy down a little bit because he was full of himself and happy about the world. He was a little leash reactive in the past and stuff like that. So he's definitely already just in demeanor calmed down through all the work that we've done, but I haven't done anything where I've touched or handled his paws or his nails or anything like that. So I want to show you guys, and I'm pretty sure he's not going to bite me, so we're not going to do a muscle. <laughs> But I wanted to show you guys, I've never done anything with him, how I would work him through. This is going to be our first time doing this, all right? Look, come here. Boy, all right. Make sure I get a decent angle on the camera for you guys. Here, buddy. Come. Good boy. So first, I got to see if he'll let me lay him down. That wasn't too hard, obviously. He probably thinks he's getting a belly rub and things along those lines. So first I'm going to do handling stuff. I'm not going to worry about my tools over here. I'm just going to touch different parts of his body and see what kind of responses and reactions I get. So a little bit of pulling his feet away when I'm touching his toes, but nothing really concerning. He's not trying to nibble at me. Just touch his face a little bit, touch his mouth, ears. offered to lick a little bit that's kind of an appeasement behavior so if you feel like you're petting or doing something and your dog it seems like they're actively licking at you a lot like when I hold on to his foot right here see if he'll show you guys that again he might not do it again good good boy I feel like that's pretty good his nails are a little bit long so I might just take the clippers and clip the ends off Make sure when you do this kind of stuff, you guys, that your clippers are really sharp. Because if they're not sharp, then it's going to be like, you know, trying to cut something like a steak with a butter knife. There's going to be a lot of unnecessary pressure there that's just not going to help your cause. If it can be really quick and really smooth because your clippers are sharp, it'll make a huge difference. So first, I'm just going to touch, touch them with these. All right, so I'm not clipping yet. I want to see if just doing this, sometimes a dog has passed associations that will cause them to react just because the clipper comes near their feet. So I feel like he's going to be all right. So I'm going to try to take a little bit off of the first nail and see if that clipping noise and sensation. So see, he's trying to get up. So that's my forearms going to pin him there. If I had to, I could grab his under leg. Good. Just readjust him. Good boy. Sometimes when you go and you protrude one individual nail as if you're going to cut it, that can be a little bit of a trigger for them as well versus just having their whole paw and touch, touch, touching. If I really focus on one specific nail, then it might cause a little bit of discomfort in them knowing that they're going to get clipped. Good. So you can see just the noise, that clip, he's got a little association with that. We're nowhere near as quick. I know that didn't hurt him. And I just sharpened these, so I know that it's a really smooth cut. So he's got a little bit of an association with the clipper noise. Maybe a little bit with the sensation on his nails, too. But I just want to make sure that he understands nothing's going to happen to him. So see, there's a little bit of the struggling. That's fine. He can struggle. I'm not doing anything that's going to hurt him. Good boy. And I'm going to go right back to doing the clipper thing. Good boy. And I'll do the next nail. I'm just taking a little bit off the tip. So when I do go on with the Dremel, nothing is going to take like 100 hours to get down to where I want to get. So there's struggle again. That forearm helps to pin his head down so he can't get up. And if he struggles a lot, then I'll grab that underneath leg. You know. Good job, buddy. not 
to spend too much time finding the perfect spot on their nail because hovering over their nail with the clippers like this actually can be a trigger for them. If I just get it done real quick and just take a little bit off the end, it's more the motion of it that I want to make sure that they're going to be okay with versus trying to get as close as I can to the quick or clip around different angles and stuff like that. This is his first time. I don't care if we get it done perfect. I don't care if I just barely take a little bit off the tip. I just want a little bit of a positive association. Nothing's going to happen to you. It's not the end of the world. Not that big of a deal. You know, I'm going to leave his dew claw on that side alone because I don't want to twist his leg around because he's not quite comfortable enough for that yet. And Kerrigan is being a wonderful helper. I stole her cat scratch post. If you can't tell, she's scratching on it right now. That's why the camera just wiggled. Good boy. Good job, Luca. Good. Yep. There. Nice, another little clip. And I can tell he's got some past negative associations because he's kind of flinching and waiting every time I get poised and ready to do the clip. Not so much the actual sensation or the clippers themselves. There's another little struggle. That's fine. He can struggle. He can struggle all he wants. He could whine. He could, you know, cry. He could try to nibble at my hands. Lots of stuff could happen. I know, I'm pretty sure with the work that we've done already that he's not going to try to take a chunk out of me. There's another one. Good job, buddy. Yeah, we're making good. We're making good headway. A little struggling again. Good boy. I'm just gonna do the tap, tap, tapping again. And there's nothing wrong with not like if he had a really hard time with the first foot or the first nail. We might only do one today. Nothing wrong with that. I'd rather end on a good note than try to get him all done and have it be a super like bad experience for him. Good job, buddy. So the actual, you saw that time I did it really quick. I didn't hesitate. I was doing the tap, 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 tap. Then I found a spot and clipped. He didn't even move. So for him, it's more of an association. When I take his foot and I get his nail ready and I start doing this, see how he's already starting to flinch a little bit? He's moving his head around. He's a little bit more uncomfortable. When I start to do this, there he goes again, flinching. He's getting ready for that uncomfortable sensation, but it's not quite as uncomfortable as he thinks it is. It's just his association with it. So let's see. Might as well show you guys a little bit of this too. I'm going to turn the Dremel on, put it on the ground, see how he feels about that. Picking it up, putting it down. No real reaction. A little bit of interest. Boy. Yeah. Good job, buddy. And I'm going to touch it to his foot and then take it away. And again. And this is going to be another thing where he might struggle. This is a really weird sensation for dogs, especially if they have no experience with it. Good boy. So there's that little struggling. That's why I just do a split second with the back side of the Dremel. Doesn't matter what part of his foot I touch. I don't care if it's the top or the bottom. I just want a little vibration on his foot and then move it away. Good boy. Good job, buddy. There you go. Good. You can see he's starting to relax already. I went from a split second getting a flinch every single time. Now I'm kind of doing one, two, three. I'm able to hold it on there longer and longer because he realizes it's just a weird feeling that nothing's really happening. That's the whole desensitization part. A lot of people, like when I first started this and I first touched it to his foot, that's where a lot of people would quit. My dog is scared of the Dremel, they hate the Dremel, they try to fight, they try to get up, they try to bite at me, you know, because if he was really worried about this, then he could try to nibble at my hands. It's a fear response, it's not an aggressive thing. Now I'm doing the underside, 
because that's going to be a little bit more where I do some of the dremeling on his nails. Yeah, he's a nice boy. Good job. But the funny thing is, I think he's actually less twitchy about this than he was about the clippers. This is a much more smooth, rhythmic sensation. I think he might be ready now. You see his eyes are relaxing a little bit. I'm going to flip it over and go for that first nail, and I'm just going to touch it on there and move it away. And move it away. I'm getting a little bit of flinching again because he's like, wait a minute, that doesn't feel the same as it did before. He's just doing a little bit of groaning, too. Boy, there you go. So there's struggle. I'm gonna put my Dremel down, hold his leg, hold his head down, pick this back up and touch. Because I don't want him to think that the struggling is gonna make it go away. That's a really important part. Hey, good boy. Good job. I'll get him to relax a little bit again. Go back to touching. Good boy. Yeah. And I'm okay. He's lifting his head up right now. I've got his underneath leg. You guys can see his bottom leg is the one that I'm holding, so I know he can't get away from me. Good boy. And I'm going to go right back to it. Good boy. And there's a little struggle again. And I'll do it again. So struggling isn't going to make it stop. And if I have to, I'll flip it back over so I don't have to worry about I don't want to catch his hair or his paw pad or anything like that with the Dremel. I'm more interested in him holding still when he feels the sensation and the vibration. Because there's not too, too much difference between when I actually touch his nail with the Dremel side versus when I just touch it with the back side of the Dremel. And now we're seeing the change. See the change? Now he's holding still. I'm getting a couple of strokes in at a time. We're probably just going to end on this nail. And I'm not even going to get it all the way down to the quick. I'm going to accept that this is an awesome job from him. I just had about a minute straight of grinding on his nail with no fighting and no flinching. Now I'm gonna sit up. He's not allowed to get up yet. He's gotta chill for a second first. See how he's gonna try to get up right away? That's another mistake that I see a lot of people make. When you're done, you're not done. <laughs> you're done when you're calm. And when I say it's all right for you to get up. So I wanna make sure that he's totally relaxed. I want him to almost feel like he doesn't wanna get up. I want him to be too relaxed to care. So I'm going to give him a little massage here. I'd like to see his eye relax a little bit more. If you guys can see, his eyes are a little bulbous. He's a little excited because he tried to squirm and get up when I got up. So I want to see him let a little bit of that tension go. Just because I'm not holding you down doesn't mean I don't want you to stay here and just chill. That's better. His eyes are starting to soften now. And when he gets up, I'm perfectly fine letting him sniff the uh, Dremel or the clippers. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Another thing you might notice too, if you guys haven't before with your own personal dogs, is sometimes when they get a little stressed, they'll shed a little bit more. So he's got some hair coming off as I'm massaging and brushing him. Got a little clumps of hair over there. A difference in his ear. His ears flopped a little bit before it was standing straight up. Now I'm going to let him get up. Okay. Mm, good boy. You want to sniff that? That's what I did your nails with. Yeah. Good job, buddy. No hard feelings. He's not scared. 
scared of me. He's not scared of the tools or anything like that. And one of the reasons, <clears throat> one of the reasons that I really like to use the Dremel is something that happens often when I clip first and Dremel later is their nails are sharp when you clip them. Usually you have jagged edges and stuff. So I always, usually, but for this video I wanted to show you guys with him the process of going through all of his nails with the clipper first, just to show you how I worked him through it. But usually I'll only do one or two nails with the clipper and then I'll go right to the Dremel. So I'd rather take this much off the nail and round it off instead of getting it all the way down and taking a huge chunk off with the clippers because I don't like getting scratched, but it happens. It's no big deal. Hopefully that gives you guys some good insight into how we start the nail trimming process. And he made some awesome progress from the beginning to the end. He was a pretty good uh, candidate to show you guys a little bit of struggling, but not crazy and getting a little worried and then calming back down. So I think it was awesome. And I think this video was extremely long. So if you guys feel like watching it all the way through, good for you. <laughs> but um, thank you, Luca. Nice job, buddy. Thanks for watching, you guys.